So last time we uh, took a function that we defined in Lua uh, and we called it from C and it was a function that had some parameters and it had some return types. Uh, this time we'll do the complete opposite of that. We're going to take a native function and we're going to call it from Lua. So I'm just going to copy and paste this code we wrote last time and we'll just change it to call something native. So <clears throat> I'll actually leave this the same. I'll call my Pythagoras function um, but rather than calculating the value in here let's imagine that Pythagoras function is really difficult to calculate or has some something that I need to call out to native code for and I want to call a function that I define in native code and return the value for me. So this is a bit crazy. This is me in C calling Lua and then me calling back to C. So it's it's crazy that we can do this, but we can. So I'll just call the function native Pythagoras and I'll I'll pass in the A and B and that gives me my C squared value back. So I haven't actually written this function yet, but I'm just showing what what I'd have to call in Lua to make this work. So rather than returning the value of calculating that, I'm gonna I'm gonna calculate it in native code. So I'm gonna call a Lua function that's going to call a native function that's going to return me the value and then I'm going to return that back to C. It's all a bit crazy. So, um, we need to define this function in C. Now all functions that you call from Lua, native functions, have the same signature. And the signature is, uh, if, you, if it was this, let's call it the name it would be. Um, it's not the most complicated function in the world. That every function has that signature. And you'll notice that there aren't thousands of parameters to this function, and that's because we're going to communicate via Lua with the stack. So all the communications with the stack, so we don't pass in, like there's no complicated like millions of types and things going on here. Um, everything we do, all the magic is going to happen in here. Uh, and the int that you turn is you just return the number of values you, you are leaving on the stack. So Lou is going to call this, this function and we can do whatever we want in there and then all we have to say is how many values am I leaving you on the stack? Um, so in the case of this it would be 1 because I want to leave the a squared plus b squared on the stack. Unfortunately, I'm just defining this in the middle of a method and you can't do this, uh, but you can do it with you can do it with lambdas. So let's do it that way. It's essentially the same thing. Um, and I return an int. Because if you don't use, I don't, I don't know if you've seen this, but in C++11 or whatever, if you don't put anything in here, this is basically just a function. There's nothing special about it at all. And you can you can use this as a fun you can use a function pointer to this, which is what we're going to need in a minute. So what I just wrote here is essentially exactly the same uh, as what I just wrote before, except I can put it right here next to the code that I'm using, so it makes it nice and compact. So um, for now, I'm not actually going to write the function, but let's just let's just push let's just push some random number onto the stack just so this this is actually stubbed out as a working function. Um, let's just push 999 onto the stack. So this function gets called, I'm going to push 999 onto the stack and I'm going to return to say I've left one value on the stack for you so when you come back um, just read that and you can see it's exactly what we want here. We want to be able to call this with A and B and we want to get one value uh, back off the stack. So what do I need to do? I mean, because this isn't going to work. It might compile, but what's it going to do? It's not going to work. It's given me these loads of zeros back. I'm not really checking the error codes properly here, so it's obviously wrong. My 999 didn't turn up, so something has gone horribly wrong, and that's because I haven't told it. Um, I haven't told it about this native function yet. And to do that, uh, we need a new function. So after we've created our state, and we have, I think before we do 
yeah, before we actually execute any of the code in there, we want to, um, we're going to push a C function onto the Lua stack. So again, we're using the stack in exactly the same way and we're pushing on, remember this is, it's a Lambda, but because we haven't put anything crazy in there, uh, it's just a function pointer, which is the function pointer that happens to be the one that Lua wants. So we're pushing that the pointer to that function onto Lua's stack. And then we need to set a global. So we're going to set a global, which is... and we're going to give it a name. So the global, this, this set global function it's kind of like get global. It's expecting uh, a value. It's expecting the last value on the stack to be the global that it wants. So I'm going to call this native Pythagoras. So it's setting a global called native Pythagoras and it's setting it to the C function that I've just pushed on the stack. And I believe if it works, it pops that C function off the stack. So essentially, I've created my lowest state and it and I've registered, I've kind of bound this function um, that I've created uh, into Lua. And then I've gone on ahead and none of this code's changed. It's exactly the same from before. We're just um, we're doing string on the Lua file. We're getting the Pythagoras function that we've defined up here. And we're calling it with our arguments. Except the only difference now is that inside here, it's calling out to this, to this global C function that we've defined, uh, which is just going to return 999. So if this works, let's just see what we get. So there you go. So even though we haven't calculated the values correctly yet, we've actually returned our value on the stack from native code, and we've also returned these other two values which weren't from native code. Or were they? They kind of were because uh, because we pushed them in down here. They went native, then they went to Lua, then they went back to native. So all we really need to do now is just implement our Pythagoras function in here. And again, what we're expecting in here is that we expect our two values, A and B, to be on the stack. So we want we want to just get these, we want to get the numbers. So let's get uh, like that. Did I copy that? So a would have been pushed on first and B second, so I think A would be at minus two. And not that it actually matters which one's A and B in this instance, but it might do depending on what your uh, your function is. Um, so there's our two numbers, and then we can do do our stuff on it. So C, and let's just keep it as a little number anyway. C squared is A times A plus and we're going to push our C squared onto the stack. So we, we, we didn't pop these numbers, we just read them off the stack. Um, so we read A and B. We're doing our calculation with the input values we got, so this could be a really complicated function that you're calling here. You could be doing some mental ray tracing or whatever you want to do. And then we pushed that result onto the stack, and then we told it that we pushed one result. So we're telling telling Lua we're leaving one value on the stack for you. Um, and there you go. So this A and B that we passed in from here, it passed along, the C's returned, and then it's returned back, and it all comes back. All comes out in the wash at the bottom. And let's see. So there we go. So we've now got exactly the same result we had before, except this time we've called into native code to do the processing. So in, in this trivial contrived instance, you really wouldn't do this because it's just such a simple calculation. It's the kind of thing Lua could do. And you can see that crossing this boundary from native back to Lua, there's a lot of code that has to be run, even like not here necessarily, but there's a lot of code that has to be run to marshal all this stuff around. But if you had a really heavyweight function that you needed, uh, that had to be done in native code, then you can see that it, it's not too difficult to get your code to call out um, and get that result back. So that 
is pretty cool. Um, and maybe next time we can look at how you can do a bit more with these as well, because you can put you can do something. There's something called up values, so you can you can push values out to functions that uh, you can push C pointers and things like that that, that the function can always read uh, when it gets there. So we might look at that. We might look at something else. But essentially, that again wasn't much more code than before. Wasn't much more difficult than what we did before, and we've now successfully called our code in both directions. That's pretty cool.